You're like a magician of sorts. Yeah, an illusionist. What is the, the thing that brings it all together for you? Like when I see flight, I'm amazed, you know, like how did they do that? Mm -hmm. And then, but you know already. I mean, mm -hmm. is, that, is that part of the, the trick or is it? I guess, you know, I like doing the spectacle. I like doing the illusion because that's what's, inter uh, that's entertaining. But you know, in flight, we got some great spectacle in uh, Denzel's performance, you know? So we got cinematic spectacle and we got human spectacle. And when you can put that together in one movie, that's, a, that's an entertaining night. How you feeling, man? Look like you pulled some kind of move up there, man. You saved a lot of lives. We are in a dive. I have no control on my side. We going to Everybody in brace positions. The way you landed that plane was nothing short of a miracle. I see nothing but houses. Evan, listen to me. Trim us nose down. The plane fell apart at 30,000 feet. <laughs> We're gonna roll it. What, okay. what do you mean, roll it? Ready? Here we go. On the list, baby girl. There is all kinds of crazy news people out here. You're a rock star, man. You will never pay for another drink as long as you live. Hey, this is Mike, and you're watching Real Black. And today we have the honor and privilege of being with Robert Zemeckis, uh, Academy Award winning filmmaker who's got a brand new movie out called Flight, starring Denzel Washington. This is like a book ending, like full circle moment for me mm -hmm. today because, okay. like, uh, when I was at AFI in '94, you mm -hmm. spoke right after Forrest Gump. Oh, okay. And I heard, you know, at the time you were saying that, uh, seeing that we all have like a finite amount of time that we're here on this earth, mm -hmm. that you wanted to just concentrate on telling spectacular type stories mm -hmm. that involve pushing the technology. I mean, is that still the case? You know, um, you know, I, I think it's, it is the case, but I don't think the technology is an important uh, component. It's just telling compelling stories, whatever it takes. And, but you know, the truth is, is that movies are, Movies are movies, so you know we want to go for some spectacle. I mean, we want the truth and the spectacle, and so that's where the technology part comes in. So you can present something in a way that's unique. Right. I mean, all your films have an incredible way of bringing it home. I mean, obviously, you're at root, at base, a storyteller, and then you're using the technology to service it. Was there an aha moment that where you made the decision that this is the path I want to go in? You mean for flight? For, for no, for for the for the shape of your career oh, in gosh. terms of types of stories that you tell. You know, the only no, I don't think so. I think that well, I I mean, they they seem to be different. I think that the only thing that I can find that's a thread that might move through all of them is, is I have to hang it on a, on a character that's on a journey, if you will. A, you know, a character that's arcing. So, otherwise, I don't know how to make the movie. I mean, I know I have to have a character that's going from point A to point B. And it doesn't have to be the lead character, you know. I mean, Forrest Gump is a good example. I mean, Forrest never changes. It's just everybody around him does. Uh, but I have to I have to have that, I think. That's the only thing I can think of that's similar in all the films. So why do we uh, need a lawyer from Chicago? He specializes in criminal negligence. Criminal negligence? Mm -hmm. Death demands responsibility. Six dead on that plane. Someone has to pay. I flew the plane inverted. That means upside down. You, you, know, you have any idea what that's like? I do. I uh, heard the black box recordings last night. Oh, you heard? Oh, so are you a pilot? No, I'm not. Then you don't know what they're talking about. All right, let's cut to the chase. What, 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 just tell me what it is I need to know, Charlie. The NTSB GO team also collects blood, uh, hair, and skin samples. An initial report shows that you had alcohol in your system. Mm. Thank you. Uh, so that mean anything. A couple of beers the night before the flight. This toxicology report states that you were drunk. And if it is proven that your intoxication was the cause of the death of the four passengers, now we're going to look at four counts of manslaughter. That could be life in prison. So tell us about flight. I mean, what, what attracted you to this story? Well, I love the complexity of the story. I love the anti-hero. I love the moral ambiguity. And I just thought, you know, it had a, the screenplay was so bold and so unique and so different that I just had to, I just thought it was very worthy to, to try to get made. Absolutely. What's the most fun part for you? Like when you get a hold of a script like Flight, like is it 
like, wow, I get to work with great actors or, mm -hmm. or is it like, wow, I get to design this amazing? Well, all, both of that, they're, they're all part of it. You know, it, it's all fun, you know, being able to work with the great actors and being able to try to figure out a way to really design this in a way that is an you know, exciting way to see the, to see the, the film. Uh, but for me, you know, the greatest joy was uh, watching Denzel work every day, you know, bringing, you know, just levels of performance that I couldn't even imagine. Yeah, what's, what's your collaboration like? I had, I had to wonder, like, do you just leave him alone? Like, like he's a fine car and you just <laughs> let him run itself or is, is it a real collaboration as far as like developing? It's, it's kind of that way on the set and I'm just kind of like, I'm sort of like the guy with his his foot on the accelerator a little bit. You know, that's all I do is maybe, you know, give it a few more RPM or pull back a little bit. That's my job. Prior to that, um, we get in there real, you know, we, we, we work a lot and, uh, you know, we did a lot of prep. I mean, we just, and what I mean by that is I call it prep rehearsals. We get in a room and we just, you know, just, get at it, you know, just really, you know, you know, figure out a way to, you know, find, get under the skin of that character and really work it and figure out what, what this guy's all about and all, you know, back and forth questions and answers and, you know, so we work really hard in the prep stage. There are a lot of filmmakers watching this, mm -hmm. um, yeah. so from, from a directing standpoint, it's, it feels like you, you have to use a few different sides of your brain because um, you have these big complex action things. Mm -hmm. that require a lot of planning and storyboarding and pre-visualization. And then you have these character moments that, you know, I mean, do you storyboard and plan those as well? Or? No, um, I, it, is, it is two separate tasks. I mean, I, 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 uh, I have a plan every time I go on and do a set that's just, you know, like two, two actors in a room doing something intense, you know, that I have a plan for how I want to shoot it. And, um, but I'm pretty open on, you know, pretty open to listening to what the, what, you know, you know, the actor might show up that day and say, you know, I feel like I should be sitting during this. And mm -hmm. so I don't want to have it, you know, I want to make sure that I can get a chair, you know? Right. Um, but the stuff like the, 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 the plane, uh, the plane crash, that has to be planned out very meticulously. I mean, everything has got to be really laid out and ahead of time. Cause it's the only way that anybody, all the other crew members know what they're doing. And, Certainly, it's the only way you can even budget a specific shot. You know, everybody's got to know what elements are involved. Right. So, just on the technical end, I mean, is there a lot of coverage in the dramatic scenes? More coverage so than with the. You know, not too much. Not too much. You know, I mean, if you if you watch my films over the years, uh, one thing I notice about my work is I edit less and less and less. Mm -hmm. You know, I let. You know, I mean, you know, it's like I don't want to impose my rhythms on the performers. I let them do their thing and uh, I try not to overcover these things because I don't think it it serves the 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 movie or the performer. Yeah, I, I'm thinking about like three scenes in flight that, mm -hmm. that fit that where they're long takes but there's movement so it feels like you're you're creating a new shot. Right. But, but actually it's it's just watching the two actors work. Yeah and I love doing that. You know I love I love being able to you know I love being able to you know, just let the camera kind of like glide in and glide out and reframe the shot and make that do the, uh, you know, do the editing for you without actually chopping it up. Because you have been at the cutting edge of so much of mm -hmm. the technology that's come in the last 20, 25 years, like your films represent the vanguard of, of technology, mm -hmm. the, the effects that you use and things like that. Have we, now that we're in this digital era, have we seen everything that there is to be seen, or is there a new technology beyond 3D that that um, excites you? Well, you know the thing that the, you know that you know being a person who made a movie that takes place in the future. The one thing I realized about predicting the future is that you always underestimate it. You know, um, so I don't even want to. You know, I can't even pretend to make a prediction. But um, I think we're in this digital stew, which I think is a good thing. And I think that in a, in a very short period of time, the discussion about where images are created and how they're created is gonna go away because it's gonna be, okay, we have these machines, we can create anything that the artist needs and it's gonna look perfect. Um, and that's gonna be a good thing because I think then every, that, that will force the uh, art form to get back to the storytelling and the characters, which is what it was always there to support in the first place. Right, right. So 
they say the computers will be fast enough in another 30 years or so that things will be hyper real. If oh, we yeah. Want them to be. Hyper real and, and in, 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 you know, you won't be able, I mean, you won't be, I mean, you're seeing it now. I mean, you can look at a, you can look at a, a, a model in, a, in, a, in an ad in a magazine and you don't know if it's completely virtual or if it's a photograph. You can't tell at all. So all we got to do is have enough horsepower to get that to move and, you know, it, but, it, but it won't matter because everyone will realize it's a moving image and a moving image is a moving image and what you're going to want to know is what the story is. Absolutely. Well, you heard it from the man himself. Robert Zemeckis is a pleasure. Thank you. Thanks so much um, for being on Real Black TV. Thank you. I appreciate it. That's great, man. Yeah. That's good.